Yeah, so we're good to go, guys. So, well then, thank you for joining us today. There should be a few more coming. We're going to get cracking. We're going to do this thing. It's going to be awesome. Oh, you don't, you don't have to mute yourself, bro. You're good. I need you talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These yeah. guys have heard enough. Trying to be <laughs> respectful. <laughs> Trying to be respectful. But yeah, you're speaking. Right, <laughs> you're a respectful man, dude. This is why you're on. This is why I want you. This is why I want you. I want you here. I need you here, bro. <laughs> cool. Let's do it. Let's do it, bro. Okay, cool. So people um, probably don't know you already, Aya, which is absolutely fine. You're from London, and you were part of the Stop, Stop Holding Back movement, which is yeah. like a brilliant, brilliant idea. Um, it, well, it's a movement. It's, it's a, I think it's a philosophy. And I was fortunate enough already to have um, to meet Aya in person when we were, had an event this time last year, actually, bro, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. There was. Yeah, and he, I was fortunate enough to hear his whole story, and it was amazing. It was so cool, and what it, it was amazing and cool because it was full, like jam-packed, full of challenge, uh, full of pain, full of, full of judgment, full of, full of stuff that the average person should not have to endure, to be honest. Um, but there was, there was greatness in there as well, by the way. There was pleasantries, there was, there was wonderfulness. And, and all I want to do today is, guys, I, I want you to hear Io's story um, and, and, and try and grab out the resilience and, and what he did to get through that. And we're going to go through some tips as well and work through some tips together to get through that. Now, just everyone watching, Io and I had a bit of a conversation before this. It's, it, there's an adult conversation that we can have, which is very serious, and it's, um, it, it, it touches on some very serious points in life. Um, and there's kind of like um, the, the toned down version. And we're gonna go through the toned down version today because I think that's fair for you guys. Um, eventually, at some point, maybe if it's cool with our, we can get in the future with adults and we can, we can talk about that. But I do not have every parent's permission to talk about the in-depth things that I went through. I've had a discussion anyway. Um, and I just want to say, dude, first of all, it's a privilege, privilege to have you on. These kids are great. They're going to ask you some questions at the end, if that's okay. So, bro, from the top, who are you? What are you doing right now? Um, and, and a little, a little tweet, cheeky backstory. You've got the free reign, man. Go. Well, this is a great, a great chance for me to be on here to explain myself, explain my story, how I got to this point. So I just want to thank you, Dale, again, for having me on here. And um, before I really get started, it, it's the hardest thing for me to actually speak, to communicate, to even say my name. I found it for the longest time. I'm 29 years old and I only developed the courage to even say my first name over the past two years. And even now I struggle. I struggle to say my own name. And that's because I have a speech the impediment, and that's called a stutter or a stammer. A stutter or a stammer is when a person finds it very difficult to get sounds out their own mouth, words out, phrases. Just they found they found they find it very difficult to express themselves. So if you can imagine, you're with your friends, and your friends are having a very a great conversation about about a game, I get a game they found on the PS3 or the PS4, and you're trying to get involved in that conversation, but you can't because when you open your mouth, you uh, 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 you make those type of sounds. You hesitate, you start to sweat, and then you choke, and you can't breathe, and that's the type of experiences I've had for my whole life and still have today. But what I've done in the past two years is I've learned some te techniques which you're about to see, which help me get my wor words out. And they give me the courage to not care as much about how I'm speaking, but to focus more on why I'm speaking and the message I'm trying to get out. So that's a, a bit about stammering or stuttering. So let's get to my story. So I have no idea, no idea that literally the first time I started to stutter. 
I've asked my parents, when did you notice, mum and dad, the first time I couldn't say a word or a sound? And my parents have no idea, which is not helpful. Right? So, no way. As I, so as I started to grow up, 10, 11, 12, I started to notice myself in the playground around my friends, that my friends were talking really quickly, really fast, and they were having a good time. But I really couldn't get involved. I really couldn't say words. I always struggled. I always had to use a lot of power in my lungs, in my chest, use a lot of force just to get a couple words out, just to introduce myself even. I struggled a lot. So I found it very difficult to integrate, to make friends in the playground. And that carried on to the age of 23, all the way through school, all the way through college, all the way through university. I had a very, a very um, toned down life. So when I was 13, this is when it hit me the most, when I realized that I had a problem at that time. In English, I was told to read out a poem. I was 13. And I, I the poem was in my hand. I got told to stand up. The teacher knew I had a stutter or stammer. I stood up, I had the poem in my hand like this. I looked down, I looked up, I saw, I saw my best friend at the back of the classroom, who was a female at the time, and she stared right into my eyes. And I knew that she was under some sort of, of pressure because she knew what I was feeling. I looked back up and I began to read the poem and I couldn't get a, wo a word out. So after about a minute of struggling, I got told to stop and I had to leave to, to have more practice with a special, special aids teacher. So we practiced in a little quiet room for about 20 minutes and I read this poem over 10, 15 times. And it felt fine. The poem came out and I read the poem was fine. But then I had to go back into the English class and try again. And I did that. I looked down in, into my hands, about to read this poem, and I couldn't get a word out. And that's when I knew I had a problem. And from that then, from that day forward, I was so self-conscious of my stammer, my stutter, that it transformed my whole personality, totally transformed who I was and how I felt about myself. Fast forward, college, I'm 18. I have a bit more confidence now. I go to the gym now, I've got a bit of muscle. As we do, we try to um, mask our, our insecurities by doing other things. So the gym for me was a way to hide my insecurity about my speech. So I went to the gym, I got some muscle, I had a bit more confidence. But, but in the end, it didn't make a difference because when I tried to apply for jobs, I tried to make new friends. I tried to find a girlfriend. It was always there. And no amount of muscle on my chest could help that. So I struggled again there. Fast forward now. Now I'm in university. I'm 21 years old. On the first day of meeting my new co colleagues or my friends or the people I was living with, at university. I met a guy called uh, Nuge. And he, he asked me for my name when we met in the lobby of our new dormitory where people live, our flat. He, he grabbed my hand like this and he said, hey bro, what's your name? 
and I'm going to show you all exactly what that was like. Hey, bro, what's your name? Hey, yo. That was exactly what it was like. And again, my world came tumbling down. It came tumbling down again. And he looked at me like I was on, on something else. Like I was crazy. I wasn't normal. I was not the same as him. My name is Ayo. It's Ayo. That is my name. That is my name. And I can say that now more often than not. But back then, I couldn't. And the pain it caused me was immense. Fast forward, I've left university. I can't get a job. Can't find a relationship. I was suffering from extreme sadness. December 2015, I was in my kitchen. I was thinking, what am I going to do? I've left university. I can't speak. I can't even say my name. I can't get a job. I can't do nothing at all. What am I going to do with my life? Communication is key. You can't get on in this life without being able to express yourself. So it's, it's a normal human thing to do. I was suffering from extreme sadness and I was about to do something really silly, really, really silly. But in that, in that moment, in that moment, I made a decision. I made a decision that I was not going to go left. I made a decision that I was not about to quit on myself, on my family, on my friends. And I was going to go right. And then I found some help. <laughs> I found some help. I found some help. I, I have no idea. I have no idea, maybe it was God or energy or the universe, but something came over me and pushed me to go right and not left. And I found the help and I began to work on myself. The point is I never gave up, but I had to get support. And this is the message of my story. Don't be afraid to ask for support. Don't be afraid to ask your friends and family for support. You, you are not an island an island you're not an island you're you're part of a larger community you have your mom your dad your friends use them they're here to support you and that's what what i did after 23 years of suffering by myself thinking i could hold it all in and not ask for support cut a long story short i went on this program it helped me learn some to techniques to control my speech for the most part so now i can communicate like this whereas before I, I couldn't even have the confidence to get on a zoom call like this and talk to kids and parents about my story i, I would never have done this three years ago never but now i can and i still stutter and i still struggle but it's okay because it's part of me and i'm not gonna allow it to hold back my life anymore because time time does not wait for no one time seconds minutes hours days years go by you have to make the decision to find out what you want to do what you love and go for it and not wait for someone's permission or for you to feel stronger or better, or for you to be in the right place, or, or for you to have the right friends. Just do it. Believe in yourself and ask for support. So after I had got some help, I felt like it was my mission to help other people who have a stammer and stutter, like myself. And I called this organization, Stop Holding Back, because that was the message I was telling myself when I was going through my process of healing to stop holding myself back and i read a book by by a man called john harrison who also 
had a stammer and he talked about the stammer as in holding back. So he did not, he did not use the word stammer. John used the word holding back. So he, if he was having a bad speaking experience, John would say, I was holding back. I can't speak at this moment because, not because I stammer, but because I was holding back. I wasn't, because the stammer is not important. It's the fact that you're allowing your stammer to hold you back or you're allowing your, your, your insecurities about yourself to hold you back or your judgments from your friends to hold you back. That's what is really holding you back, not the thing you think you're dealing with. So now I hope tons of people around the world who have stammers who can't say their name and we have this charity it's called the stop holding back foundation it's my baby i love it and we're trying to grow it but it's more than about speech yes we the people involved all have speech difficulties but it's all about the mentality it's all about the 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 the, the the mindset of not allowing whatever disability you 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 have insecurity you have or position you think you're in in life to hold you back you can always find a way if you make a decision to do it to to at least try Never give up and always ask your friends, family, parents for support. They're there for you and they will help you if you keep asking. So always keep asking. And that's my story, guys. I just want to say my name one more time. It's Ayo and I can now say my name. Dude, that was Ayo. fast. That was <laughs> All right, guys, can we, can we all unmute ourselves and give um, Ayo a clap just there, please? Let's do that. Let's give him a clap. That's really cool. Absolutely. Look all these people, man. So cool. And you've really, really, I can't wait for these guys to ask questions at the end and say what they want to say at the end. Yeah. Um, for now, we're going to keep the flow going. So, guys, that, that was the first time we've done that. That was absolutely amazing. So, if you want to just quickly mute yourselves again, everybody, because I just want to say to uh, to Io as well that um, I I every single time I hear that story, it affects me more than the first time, and it it, it makes me. It really makes me think about my life. It makes me think about my insecurities. It makes me think about what I deserve and what I want to do and what I become. And even though I think highly of myself, I always think there's always that 1% more I can deliver, how I can be better for other people around the world. And um, you, you said you said disability. And I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's more different ability. I don't, I don't think it's a disability at all. I think it's a different ability because if you look at it as if a different ability, I think that this is actually your, your bro, this is your superpower because just think about all the like thousands of people you're helping around the world. You've just it affected, um, well, eight other people now <laughs> with your story. So you like, you, you think that this is like, you know, a disability. I think it's a different ability and it's like your superpower that can help encourage people. Just think about like, you, we never know who we're inspiring. And I think that, your story, when people hear it, it, it may give them enough to take action on their life and think, you know what, I'm going to do something, man. I'm going to do something. It could be enough to be like, oh, you know what, I'm going to stand up to that bully. Do you know what, I've just said our story. I'm not going to contemplate doing this silly thing. You know what, I'm going to speak to somebody. I'm going to speak to my mom. Mom, I feel like I'm really sad. I just need some help. Maybe you could help me or is there a YouTube that I could watch or, or someone around the world that can help Mum, I feel really angry and I feel like out of control and it's new, doing my head in and I don't know what to think. Um, and I don't want to be this way because I know that it upsets you, but, you know, I need, I need your help with this, you know? Um, so, bro, like, thank you so much for having the courage for sharing that story. 
Um, I know all these people here are so grateful for it as well. I really do. Um, I just want to add, add something, Dale, that, if that's okay. Please. For me, it took me many, 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 many years to learn that it's okay to share your feelings. That's, that is something I never learned from my parents. And that is not my, that is not the fault of my parents. My parents were, were raised in the same way. My parents weren't raised to show and express their feelings and be, be honest about how they feel. But, I, but that was the key for me feeling that I could express myself and release some of my some of my pain and all the worries I had, all the insecurities I had about myself, being able to have to feel I have permission to tell another human being about it. That's what set me free at the first stage, being able to talk about my feelings. And I think kids should be to talk to your parents and tell them how, how you feel how you feel all the time so they can make adjustments and help you out um, and help you grow into a good human being who's well-rounded who's resilient who's strong who's not afraid to cry crying is awesome man mm. crying is awesome don't be afraid to cry i cry a lot these days you know <laughs> i listen to music and i cry and i make myself cry on purpose so i can release tension release anxiety you know it helps a lot to cry and if you're a man if you're a little boy and you've been told it's not you shouldn't cry that's a lie crying will help you <laughs> Mate. yeah just to express express yourself bro that's sick exactly i am um, i often tell this story to people as well um i i i was the same i, I okay so my mum and dad I love them so much. It was beautiful. You, you know, do anything for them. They they gave me permission to be upset and share my feelings. They didn't really emphasise it, um, but for, I don't know where I got it from. I think I got it from a co like a, a coach or something when I used to do athletics. I don't know, but I didn't think it was okay to cry. I didn't think it was very the, the best thing to do because I didn't want to show weakness. I wanted to be the man. I wanted to be alpha. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be you know the best in the world, which is very. And to do that, you're not allowed to cry because men don't cry literally don't know where I got that from and it was wrong and um my my brother um my brother's gay and I was an idiot because I wasn't there for him I supported him through the whole of his life when he was being bullied I used to I used to fend for him physically and emotionally I used to be there for him um and uh but when he turned when it went well not so when, when he came out I, I didn't support him and I thought and, and looking back now, I thought, Dale, you and it, why? And I'm telling you this story because I'm being insecure. I'm being, this is my, this is my vulnerability. This is my insecurity. I don't like sharing this story uh, at all because it makes me look like an idiot. And I hate looking like an idiot, but uh, I feel as if this needs to come out because it's, um, when I, when I wasn't there for my brother and, uh, I was in the wrong crowd and they used to take the mick and that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, and thought, oh, gay boy, gay boy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, gay boy, yeah, like that. And, and like looking back now, I know you should never live with regret. And I know that. And I'm working through it with my coach. But it's like, I feel as if, hmm, I feel guilty for it. So I feel regretful for it. Um, because I didn't, I hated the fact that he was going through this alone. And I hated that so much. Um, because it's not, it wasn't normal back then you know um and it so should be it so should be um and what it is it is, it is normal it so should have been back then that's what i'm trying to say and um and then I, I i closed that book i closed it and i carried on you know living and stuff da, 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 da. and it was only until i'd say i say recently around about two years ago with my girlfriend now laura um i was i was uh, watching a movie called love simon and it was a brilliant movie it was really good and, and basically what happened was it was a high school movie in america where this kid didn't know if he was gay or straight or whatever he was going through his his, his thoughts and his sexuality and he came and eventually somebody found out that he was gay and told the whole school told the whole school so they stole his chance to come out to people and it's very very heartbreaking and guess what i was thinking about boom i thought of my brother obviously 
Um, and every single time I used to tell this or think about it before what I'm about to tell you, I try. I did. I, I, I felt like, and I went to the toilet or I went out the house or I went away. I went for a run. I did some boxing or I did, did lifted weights. I like you, I lifted weights, you know? Um, and I was building my, my armor on the outside so nobody could come close. The bigger I felt just here, people wouldn't think that I'm weak for crying because they look how musky Dale looks. Whoa. False, false. Because inside I was aching, you know? On the inside I was crying, on the outside I was faking it. And then this boy, Simon, he came out to his best friend. And I was laying on the couch like this um, with Laura here and I was giving her a cuddle. We were just watching, watching the movie. And he came out to his, uh, to his friend and I felt a warm sensation go down my cheek. Well, it, it went down that way because I was laying down. <laughs> um, and, and it was like, oh, what's, that's weird. I ignored it and I carried on watching it. And then Simon came out to his mom and I felt the biggest pain in my throat just there like, oh. you know, when you, who here has ever held back tears? Who has ever held back anger? Who has ever held back sadness? I've done all of those things. I'm sure you guys as well. And it, and it freaking hurts. It freaking hurts. I can tell you that right now. And the pain was physical. I'm holding back an emotion, but it's hurt me physically. What? How does that work? It works. It happens. And I was in so, so much tension and I felt myself shaking and I felt myself flooding down with tears just here. And I was just, and I was still going on when like this. I can't show look. I can't. I can't show Laura that I'm crying because men don't cry, and she'll think I'm a weak, and she'll break up with me. And I was scared of that. I was scared of that, bro. Um, and then when my brother came out to my dad, in fact, I'll tell you that bit in a second. Then Simon came out to his dad, and I lost it. I was uncontrollable. I couldn't hold it back. I wasn't strong enough to hold it back. And I let it out and I was shaking. I was going up and down and I've never seen someone turn their head so fast. I thought she was like an owl. I thought her head was going to fall off. Laura went really, really, really quickly and I couldn't disguise it. <laughs> I had no chance. And she said, are you crying? And I had a decision to go to the toilet or to run out the house or to do something different. But instead I lay there and I said, yeah, I am. And I lost it. And I was bored in it. And she turned around and she squeezed me so tight. So tight. She didn't break up with me. She didn't think I was a loser. She didn't, she didn't think I was less of a man. She squeezed me so tight. It hurt, man. It hurt. And I was shaking. The snot was going down my face. I was bawling it. I was crying. And, and the pain... I had no pain no more. I didn't have any pain no more. There was no I released it and it got, and for me doing what I'm doing, I felt like, you know, I was living a lie not releasing and now I'm completely vulnerable. I let it all out if, it, if it's crying and I felt, no, it's not strength holding it back. It's strength letting it go. It's strength releasing it. It's strength to stop holding it back, to be in that zone. And the reason why I think I cried at my, that, that when he came out to his dad was because my dad in real life, I was scared. I thought dad thought that, you know, gay people are, uh, you know, uh, whatever. I thought that. I thought that. I've never been so wrong in my entire life. And my dad, I love my dad, he's my role, role model. He was, you know, it just exploded in my, in my mind and my heart. It was crazy because Kyle said, my brother, he said, Dad, I think I'm, I think I'm gay. And my dad looked at him and said, well, are you happy? And he said, yeah, and Dad said, well, let's get a Nando's then. <laughs> so we never know, we never, I know it's scary to release, it's scary to do a big ab sale, it's scary to do a zip line, it's scary to do these physical things, but it's even more scary to release your vulnerabilities, you know? So I wanna, I wanna thank Io for helping me release that story to you guys, and I think it's really important. In fact, I would like your homework, everybody watching this, your, your mission, not homework, your mission, is to uh, every day at a certain time have an, have an emotional release or an emotional counsel session or something. And you can pretend to be counselors and I want you to release your feelings. And here's how we do it. We play this game a lot. All I want you to do 
is get some Skittles, okay? Put them in a bowl, get one Skittle out, don't look, and if it's a red one, tell your feeling of anger. Mom, dad, I felt angry today because you did this and I need to control it because of this. Cool, blah, blah, blah. how do I make you feel? If you go in again, pick a purple one. Oh, that's my excitement one. Pick a yellow one. What emotion is that? Happy. You see, I'll write all these notes in me because I don't want to steal any more of Io's time. But that's what I want you to do. Um, so Io, Io, dude, is, is there anything you want to add? Because we're going to have a five minute break. Well, we're going to come off in five minutes and we're going to come back on to ask some questions if that's okay, mate. Yeah. So Yeah, was, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, cheers, bro. So, just wanna, go on. I just want to say I've learned a bit. Actually, not a bit, a lot right now from your story and now i'm going to implement some of those things in my life and the people that i help so thanks for that for that story thanks for sharing you can always learn from people who do the same thing as you or something similar and you're you, you are great bro at what you do so cheers oh. thank you for listening kids as well <laughs> i appreciate that man you're gonna make me cry in front of these people and that's okay <laughs> 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 so dude that was awesome um i love that so much is there um before we do go on i just want to make sure that people can if you're okay with people finding you um yeah of course yeah where, where can where can people find you dude you can find me on facebook you just write my full name in zoom as you see in zoom ao d adisanya that's that's on Facebook. Find me on on Instagram. Ao dot stop holding back. Ao dot stop holding back. And we have a charity website. Stop holding back dot org. Stop holding back dot org. That's awesome. That's right. where you That's can cool. find me. And on YouTube, if you if you put my whole name, my first name, and the word stammer. You find a lot of stuff from me on YouTube. Oh, dude, I'm going to subscribe. I'm just starting my YouTube yeah. channel now. I'm going to start editing it today. <laughs> That's cool, man. I'm going to, I'm going to be a subscriber. <laughs> Thank you, man. No, no worries, brother. That's cool. So, oh, um, one, one more thing. Please. Sorry. Yeah, carry, on. carry on, man. Carry on. We do daily podcasts on our, on a charity Facebook page. Stop holding back now. That's a charity. If you put on Facebook, stop holding back. We, that page will come up straight away and, and we do a daily podcast where we talk about mindset and helping helping kids teenagers parents people who who have um it's more it's more geared to people who stutter but i'm sure you can gain something out of it if you want to check in that's it nice one bro i think people are checking on that now already um epic dude we just a quick question were you were you a bit nervous a bit scared of coming on today of course I was, man. I had to meditate for about for 10 minutes before I, I came on. Yeah, you found it. Yeah. You found my website. Kevin, nice one, yeah. So I had to meditate. Thanks, Kevin. Really appreciate that. <laughs> I had to meditate, bro, for 10 minutes. had to breathe. And I had to tell myself that it's okay to stammer. Because I, I still have these thoughts that say it's not... I have to try not to stammer. I have to be fluent. I have to speak like you Dale because you are really really good at, at public speaking so I, I felt like I have to oh he's going to be like this so I have to match him so I have to tell myself no that's Dale that's what he's good at this is what I am I'm good at I don't have to compete with him we are both good at different things and it's okay I'm, a, I'm still a man <laughs> I'm, I'm still a man it's okay so I had to really have to I have to I have to tell myself this every day because I'm still have my demons around stuttering. I'm not all the way there. I'm not perfect, but I'm far enough to help people behind me. That's how I see it. Man, that's it. That's it. That's cool, man. Um, I love that. So everyone hearing, he was he was scared. Um, that's that's brilliant. And everyone's got their own strengths. And I think it's more powerful for Io to come on knowing that he's scared compared to, well, I know, I know we shouldn't compare, but um, for me, I, I'm, I'm not scared. I've got, I know you guys now and I love that. It's brilliant. I know people are going to be watching this. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, so if anything, I've excelled today this much and I've excelled today this much. Um, but what can I do for me personally to get up here? 
what can I do? I need to figure that one out today. Um, all I've got to do is show up and be enthusiastic. So dude, this has been absolutely stupidly awesome. People are finding you again. There's Kieran Panda. <laughs> Thanks, Kieran. Thanks, Kieran. <laughs> You're a legend, mate. You're a legend. <laughs> um, get away. Go meet yourself. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.